Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Bernita Glenn White. Thank you for joining us. I am a strategic transformational coach and I am here with Melissa Styers. I like to say the Melissa Styers because it just rolls off the tongue that way. So she's gonna talk to us today. And Melissa, please tell me what you do in the world, what you do in the world and what results you produce. Oh, I love that question, Dr. V. I am so excited to be with you. I hope that your audience feels my energy. I'm just so honored to be on this virtual platform um, with just someone I admire so much. So I am a Jay Shetty certified life and success, success coach. Um, and I work with both men and women who are anywhere between their late 20s. I mean, I, I've taken on some young 20s uh, to, to mid 50s who are really trying to transform whether it's in their personal or professional life. Um, I really started out wanting to help people uh, find clarity, deal with mindset in personal issues. But as I found that that's also kind of transitioned specifically into professional in, uh, issues as well. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs um, that are trying to get the courage, uh, trying to understand their ideas of how to put them together uh, and to launch. So that's my favorite thing to do. I also um, love speaking. I'm an international speaker. I do a lot of talks on confidence, on dealing with the bully in your brain. And this is another special thing that I share is I, I also talk about remote working. I like to tell people that I did teleworking before COVID made it cool. So I'm a little, I'm the remote guru girl. So there from time to time, you can see me popping up and sharing all those special tips. So I, I go into companies, I work with both corps and organizations, and I do leadership training and um, coaching. Wow, that is amazing. And you know, all of that you shared I want to go back a little bit because you did not start all of that. You know, you, that was a journey you started taking, but where did you start? Like start sharing some of your real experiences, like before all of that, because that's, that's the fascinating part that got you to do all of that. Amazing that's, work. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So I will say that I've been on the stage since I was two years old. Um, I grew up in a, uh, in a religious community, and, and I think that the, a lot of folks that have those kind of opportunities that young, young people are kind of put on stages early, um, and I think with a lot of things in life, you either sink or swim, so I kind of knew that I liked the stage, and I liked public speaking, and I liked debates, um, and I'm, I'm from Florida, um, and I went to the University of Florida, go Gators, and once I graduated, I shot up to Washington, D.C., where my career took off really quickly. Um, I was really blessed to uh, work at an organization where um, the, the president, who was this brilliant man, kind of allowed me to live and work and be all the things that I was created to be. And so early on, I had a seat at the table as a woman, as a young woman, and um, we traveled the world together. We went through all over the Middle East, all over Asia, um, Europe, uh, South America, Central America, and of course the, the country. And I was put in front of, uh, I was, you know, I put together partnerships with Fortune 500 companies, with Fortune Magazine, um, their global forums in Chengdu, China, and in San Francisco. I, I launched global forums in Seoul, Korea, and Hong Kong. So I had this really, really, really big mix of experience. And being a girl um, from small town USA and sending me over to Kuwait and to Saudi Arabia and to, to walk the streets of Israel and, and Jordan with, um, with fellow comrades, with palace members um, from the royal families, I really got this awesome, awesome, awesome experience to look at the world through all these different cultural eyes and all these different settings. And it's been an amazing journey and it's helped me um, understand, uh, understand even more so why we're all here. And I'll be honest, I believe the number one reason we are all on this earth is for relationship, relationship with one another um, in, in all the various forms. But it's been a, it's been a journey. And I, and I look back on just my, I have a birthday coming up, a milestone birthday coming up in October. And it's kind of amazing that the path that life took me on, and it wasn't a planned path, <laughs> as a, a lot of times it isn't. Wow. Hopefully we get into that with these questions. I think we will. If not, I'll just make it happen. But I want, I'm glad you shared all of that because I wanted um, the audience to see, you see how she started and what she was talking about being a certified um, coach and, and working with executives and entrepreneurs. All of that was great, but you had to hear some of her backstory so that brilliance is coming from everywhere. So I, I'm glad you shared that and maybe we can deep dive a little bit more um, into that. So you shared a lot about that and 
let, I want to know, like, how would you describe yourself either personally or professionally, or are you just both like one in the same? That's a great question. I like to tell people what you see is what you get. Um, you have to be a little bit more polished if you are literally standing in the palace with the queen. Um, I'm not going to, you know, be my total self, but I, I, <laughs> there's a joke. I'm very short. I'm five foot tall. And so I've been known to trip in heels quite a bit. So I, I may trip. Um, but I, I would like to say that I'm, I'm a lover of people. I am a seeker of stories. Um, and, and I'm a, I'm a strategist and I will go out of my way to make someone happy. Um, not in the people pleasing sense anymore. That has been a journey, but whether it is my husband, my daughter, our two dogs, we now have a puppy, um, friends that I come into contact with that are lifelong, that are new. And then of course, with my clients and my constituents and the corporations that I work with it, it all kind of translates. Um, I'm a firecracker. I'm very direct. Um, and, uh, I am, I'm pretty much in the, in the home. I'm a little bit, I would, my, my husband would probably tell you I'm a little bit more laid back. I don't do as much research on our vacations as I should do. <laughs> so we're, we stay at some dumps and he's like, didn't you do this for a living? Like you were in seven star hotels in Kuwait. Why are we staying at the motel with legit roaches? Oh like, my goodness. I've given up that true story. We just had our 13 year um, anniversary. <laughs> he's like how did this happen because I give up so I think I think um my personal and professional are very very intertwined um I'm a little more if you can say a little more relaxed on my my personal side but you know that's that's I'm glad you said that because we have those qualities and traits that carry over but sometimes it's like which one is going to be more dominant <laughs> at home or at work <laughs> and I just like I, said, I just give up on this <laughs> so yeah. much <laughs> It's too hard. It's too hard hilarious. to live a double life. I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend living that way. And I've seen people, well, we've all seen people. I've seen people called out and caught out because they were living such double lives, whether it was in the white house or in the boardroom. And so I, I believe um, in, in authenticity and authenticity and empathy. Those are probably my two words. Oh, those are good. Authenticity and empathy. I like it. So when you say to be um, not living double lives, can you expand or expound <laughs> on that more? One of those words. I say expand, y'all. It's good. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, I, I wrote an article recently. It's published on LinkedIn. It's called, are you a boss or a leader? It's about being a boss or a leader. And you know, bosses, they're, you know, everybody that comes with a title. So, you know, they're always going to be managing somebody. There's always, there's, it's a hierarchy and, and you know, that hierarchy, you hear it. Um, but I believe leaders and leadership uh, can sprout out anywhere. You do not have to be deemed a leader. Do you not have to have a special tighter title? I believe you can be a leader in your, in your home, in your place of worship, in your community. If you're still in school, you can be a leader there. Of course, in your corporations, um, because the because leaders uh, leadership is actually a lifestyle, and so leading, um, I believe in in leading with, like I said, authenticity, which means what you see is what you get, and what I say is true. I'm not going to tell you that I love that yellow outfit on you, which I do, and then turn around and say, oh my gosh, that is not her color. I just said it because you wanted to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to. Um, come home and let my, you know, say that we are just super structured and I read 20 minutes a day every day to my daughter and she's on the iPad for, you know, five, five hours. And I, I think that that's why a lot of the blogs and the influencers that show the realness have mm -hmm. really picked up in the last, uh, you know, over the last decade, because I think people are just searching for be what you say, be who you are. Don't tell me like if, if, if you're, if you, you're Jennifer Aniston, let me know that you have 14 housekeepers and that you do spend $3,000 a day on, on, on your face cream. That makes me feel better. Right. You know? So, um, I, I really want who I am to be in my, in my work life and who I am in my home life to, to translate and be the same. I don't, you know, um, I never, especially, I, I never want to put my best foot forward outside of the house and then have my home life and my personal life getting the short end of the stick, which I believe we, I will say we as women, I'm sorry to generalize, I think uh, we as women and also men, like 
we tend to do that because what what do you do? You take the people that are closest to you for granted, right? Yep. You're they're they're always there. They're your doormat. They're your dumping bag, and they're the people that we pr- really should be protecting and nurturing and and you know focusing on. But they're the ones that are always there. So we're going to focus on the richest man in the world because I've only got two events with him and I've only got thirty minutes each. So he's going to get sparkly, shiny Melissa, and everybody else is going to get. Uh, what they get. And I've worked, I've done the work, Dr. V. It has not always been that way. I've done the work so that the two are are, are one because I, I grew up in a home where um, there were double lives and it's it's not a safe place and it's not a well place. Wow. Uh, you, you said something and I, I was like, well, do I want to dig deeper into that? But I actually, yeah, I, I do. So we're going to deviate a little bit. When you talked about the person on the outside that we're trying to please in our professional lives, you know, they get the best version of who we are, but we don't, they don't do that in our personal lives. Now, because you said this, I'm trying to think of the question to ask, like, what do you mean by that? Is that a good thing? Like, let's talk about that more. Let's unpack that more. Like, or why do we think that happens, especially for high achievers, <laughs> professional high, because we do that a lot. And I'm generalizing too, because we've no. been in circles and it happens. I wonder why, why do we do that? So this is, I don't know. I, well, cool. so for me, for me, um, one of my drivers for a really long time was fear of failure. And I was just having a conversation. Um, like I said, I've been married 13 years. I stayed married through COVID. Where is my gold medal? Uh, it's like dog <laughs> life. I feel like we've all got an extra seven years of marriage plugged in there, <laughs> but you know, so married 13 years during that time, my husband did a couple of tours in Afghanistan and he would come over, he would get these things called R and R's rest and relaxations. And one time we met up in France and it was wonderful, but there's, there's a photograph of me and this is years ago. And I'm holding, um, I'm holding a, a, a phone, my cell phone. And then I'm also holding my work Blackberry. So I'm, I'm dating us, but I had the two phones and that was just kind of, that was quintessential Melissa. And here I was, I only had two weeks with my husband who has been in a war zone and going back to a war zone but I had that Blackberry. What was that driver? What was that driver? And for me, I believe that was one fear of failure, of course, but this also um, need to be needed. And God forbid somebody else steps in and does my role because, you know, another generalization that we say for women is, you know, we were taught there's, there's only one seat at the table for a woman. So elbow the other out, you know, we talk about empowerment. We talk about a big game. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, no, I'm true. not going to help you unless you want to intern for me type of thing. So there was, there was a fear of failure, but also the fear of being replaced or what happens when the place doesn't burn down when you're gone for a week, you know, and if your sole driver is that pat on the back from work and that acknowledgement from your job, that's where the disconnect come, comes in. And that's where it came in for me. And that's where the, the work, you know, had, had to begin. And, it, and, and I wish I could tell you, oh, I saw that picture and everything changed. No, it was, a, it was a very long, long journey, especially if you're someone that comes from, I come from very humble means. Mm-hmm. So to come from a humble, a humble background, and I, I'm excited to talk about what the term grit means to me with you too. Like, you know, I come from such a humble means. So to get into these places where normally prestige and family connections and money opens those doors. So to be in those places, I don't want to get kicked out. I don't want to get kicked out of Chef o- Hunt, Jose Andres's private 12 person restaurant, like 12 seats, 12 person seat. Like tw- I don't want to get kicked out. I want to be in the room with the Amir. I want to be like, you know, because that's my identity. Mm, no. Oh my gosh. And how is that? Like, that is terrible. And just it's it's horrible because you cannot identify of your as your last big accomplishment your last big person you met because what happens there's always we know this there's always going to be somebody better yeah. there's a documentary with taylor swift and she you know needs to hear that crowd i mean taylor swift with her bajillion followers like it's, it's not a way to live and so for me it took takes it has taken a lot of work a lot of self-work to really get the two to become the same and to be able to put the the work down and, and realize where my identity comes from and who really I am. Wow. Thank you for unpacking that for me and for all of us, because that does lead into the next part of the conversation to talk about grit, because you know, I wrote the book, <laughs> Embracing Grit for Greatness. 
Uh, becoming professionally powerful through personal empowerment. <laughs> Thank you so much. And everyone, I do not tell them to show up with the book. I do not <laughs> at all. So you didn't I, tell me to highlight it either. I did see. <laughs> but just transparency, she was one of um, my great sister friends who did help me um, edit and read through. She was with me through that process because I got this done in 90 days through COVID <laughs> with the, uh, when we were on the real shutdown, <laughs> right? <laughs> we were locked up. So um, I do appreciate her for that. This, but this your COVID not, baby, this is, is your COVID baby. It really is. And you know, I neglected and I, and I know we're going to get back on it. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to help people? What are my next steps? And I literally had a friend, another one to say, didn't you just write a whole book, <laughs> you know, in 2020? And I was like, yeah, but it was so much. I wrote it, pushed it out and the baby was over there. So I'm glad you said that because I have to pick the baby back up and nurture it. And that is got a lot of tools. Let me just say it's got a lot of tools and a lot of wisdom. Didn't tell her to say that you are. No, I she did not. I'm not being paid for any of my endorsements today. <laughs> not yet anyway. Not yet. <laughs> so, but thank you for that. So we're going to break down this title. I love to hear different perspectives of people um, same words and it's just amazing what people think about those words so we're going to break down the title and just to hear what you have to say about that so the first one is what does grit mean to you so grit at it honestly and I'm curious if you've had this answer but it's just it's exactly how it sounds and I'm a teeth clencher and I'm like bite down dig in um it is I, I it is exactly the way the word reads to me it's grit it's uh, when you kind of put your feet firm in the sand, when you are, you know, in a any athletic setting, when you're climbing that mountain, when you're getting to the top of Everest, even though everything's coming against you, when all signs are pointing to no, 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 no. And you're saying, yes, I will go through when the sky has fallen and we've had a global pandemic, I'm going to get choked up. Like when the world has fallen apart and we're losing loved ones and we're losing community, but we are still standing and we are still holding on to our mental health. We're still holding on to our relationships. We're still holding on to our spirituality. That all to me is grit. And I, I you know, I know you've talked about this. It's, it's the, it's the, um, it's the sand in the, in the oyster shell and it's becoming that pearl and that, you know, it's, it's definitely not always beautiful. Um, it's definitely not easy. And that word grit, grr, grit down, like it doesn't sound easy. I feel like I'm going to chip a tooth every time I say it. And, and that there's chipping, there's refinement, there's, um, there's a big process. And sometimes the reward looks different for hanging in than, than you think it's going to in the first place. But I, I really believe it is, it is kind of bearing down and whatever in any situation, not letting the waves of life and circumstances change, change you or change your mindset. Cause I, I'm a big believer in mindset. Yes. I, I love all of that. That was great. I love that. You're right. It does make you go. <laughs> Grit. Uh, no, you're the first person. <laughs> just the sound. I'm a sound person. It just so like, it just really like, you know, grind that teeth, grind those teeth, grind mm -hmm. them. But you, you mentioned a little bit, been about this um, throughout your journey. So I want you to talk about your grit as far as your journey, because I think you talked about, it. I think um, coming from small town USA and then ending, ending up like pretty much in with royalty, what was, what did grit look like that? Like explain grit. I mean, because you didn't go into that saying, well, I have grit. <laughs> <laughs> I did growl a couple of times though. Um, you know, what, somehow, I, um, well, not somehow, I believe, like I said, I believe in relationships and I believe there was a lot of love poured into my life at a young age, as well as a lot of adverse, adverse adversity. Adverse. Um, and, and so seeds were planted. And I also, I'm a woman of faith and I'm you know proud of that. So seeds were planted and I knew that I, I was called. I knew that there were things I was supposed to do. I know that I'm called to people. I know that I'm called to coaching and consulting and, and motivation and to, to love. And so there was that planted inside me. Um, but at a young age and throughout my, my youth, there was a very big adversary that I faced. I mean, it was my dad um, that was emotionally and verbally uh, abusive my, my entire life and was the person telling me that I couldn't do it or to go kind of show him how it's done. 
And I think that you, you know, you can look at a lot of people that, that have had success and um, a lot of people have those have similar stories where there's, there's, you know, there's like the bully it's, it's in the movie. And, um, and I just knew that I couldn't allow his definition and some other people's definitions, the world's definition um, to, to limit what I was called to do. Um, and, and so I was not ever the smartest in the room. I was not ever the fastest in the room. I sure as heck was not the tallest. I'm five foot, but by <laughs> God, I was going to be one of the hardest working and I was going to be the friendliest. I went to a very large, that started for me in public in high school. I went to a large high school coming from a very tiny middle school. And I didn't know, I knew like 30 people out of 2000. And so I just decided as a, this is me as a, what, as a freshman, 15 years old, I remember I'm, I'm going to smile at everyone. I'm going to smile at everyone and say hello. And that kind of started my journey where, you know, I became Miss High School and best personality and a president of this and all that. And you know, kind of continued on, but, but I saw that that worked because at the end of the day, people do want to smile. I'm, I'm watching, not to totally get off track, but I just, um, I'm, I was sharing, I, I shared with Dr. V earlier that I'm trying to like, I, I can't do any more work on myself. I'm, I'm, I need some mindlessness. And I've started watching the TV show, Ted Lasso, and it's on Apple TV. And it's this coach that moves to England. He's a soccer coach, but he's positive. He's just Mr. Positivity. Mm -hmm. And I'm so attracted to it right now. I'm so drawn because we need happy. And I think, you know, our world is hard. Obviously, right now, we are going through something, but people have been going through something for years. So a smile and a, a, a friend and somebody that truly believes that, that they're worthy, I think that goes a long way. So I am... Um, I, I had I had stumbling blocks, I had roadblocks, and I also had people that were kind enough to speak truth into my life because I did allow bitterness to get in there. Um, when you're young and things don't happen how you feel and you're righteously indignant and you feel wronged, um, I think you know, like there's, there's two ways that that can play out because you know you have come into contact, you may have been in it at the time, that person that has that chip on their shoulder, right? when you have been wrong, when you've done nothing, it's not your fault. You did nothing to deserve it. Right. And yet you're plowed. So what do you do? Do you, do you live a life with this chip that becomes, you, you basically become a rock person because it takes over you? Or do you, do you lay that burden down and take up the other side, which is love and hope and forgiveness, perseverance and grit. And, um, Sometimes you're wise enough to see that for yourself. And sometimes people that love you have to call that out. And people that loved me um, called that out to me for a young age. And still folks will, are, you know, I have, I have dear friends that I trust um, and counselors and coaches that are able to help, you know, when they see that, if that happens again, um, because that, you know, that could have, I could have carried a lot of bitterness and really gone a different path. I would, it would have been sad. We would have never met. We would have never connected. Oh. But you said something great, um, having that chip on your shoulder and then end up turning into a rock person. And that is powerful because that, that's exactly what happened to me. I, you're like, um, what, what did I put the chip there or was I the chip? I mean, I've been on both sides. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> the, the, the two becomes one who the heck knows. Yeah. Right. But, Chicken egg. Um, Right. And going through, like um, I talk about in the book, there was a chip on my shoulder and I going through a process, especially a doctoral program or even being a college professor. And then I was turning into a rock and it was like, you're going to go through this process no matter what, but what are you going to do about that? And either I had to realize what was going on. I wish I could say I self-discovered that, but it was people around me were like, um, can you not be this person? Like, mm -hmm. so you're right. Um, and I like that you said that. It's like, you have a choice either way because whatever's going to happen is going to happen. The process is going to be the process, but you get to decide, do you want to just um, take the chip off or become the rock? So I, I love that mm -hmm. um, analogy. I don't, yeah. Is it Isn't that easier? And it's so, and it's so great to sit here and I watch you and I know you've just overcome even something else and you're yes. not bitter. Um, you're, you're, you're living truth, but it's so, it's so easy to say that, oh, just, you know, you can, you can either get bitter or better. You can just like, it's so, it sounds so easy. So great sitting here, but man, going through it is not yes, easy. Not. And, and having that trusted circle, that's why you have to, 
man, I, I can't, I don't know if we're going to get into this or not, but you've got to have the right people around you, whether that is a coach like Dr. V that can speak truth into your life, trusted community, because when you want the right people that can spot that yes, and that you're able to receive that from, and you don't want these other naysayers that are going to be negative towards your dream or the worst is when they add to your bitterness, when they encourage it, when they help build it up, because they will solidify you. They'll, they'll turn you into that, that stone faster because they're just, they're, they're what the clay, the cement and water just, Mm -hmm. they're adding to it. So it's very important who you, you know, who you let in, who you let speak into your life, um, that you whittle that some of those, some, you know, sometimes you gotta, gotta whittle some of those away. Right. Well, I have, you know, I haven't talked about that with anyone. We haven't gone, um, we haven't gone in depth with that about how, who, who's in your circle during this grit process. That is powerful. I've made a note of that to dig deeper in there somewhere. Maybe I'll have you back somewhere, I would but that, that is very important. And I'm glad you highlighted that for people who are watching your, check your circle people. <laughs> I love it. Your journey changes. It changes. And And that's another, look at you just opening up things. Yes, that is sometimes we don't want to let people go when we're, and you don't have to let them go. But like you said, your journey changes and you just have to figure out who's going to be your cement and water because if you have this chip, or who's going to, you know, chisel that down to keep you the, the who's going to keep you soiled and growing yeah. new growth, you know, like, who's like, are you going to, I see like, honestly, I'm seeing these both in Disney movies. I have a four and a half year old and there are rock people in frozen too, or are you going to be that rose and beauty and the beast that keeps blossoming or whatever? So like, I, that's literally how it's playing out. But, um, and I think, you know, I'm very loyal. I'm, I'm loyal to, to, to friends, to relationships and, and the investment that you make. Um, but I, 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 uh, I posted this a couple of days ago, just because, and, and this is, I think a, this is such a myth that I believe as a culture, we're getting over, like, just because they're related to you, just because they're blood, just because she's been your best friend since you were kindergarten, or, you know, just because he's been your husband for 25 years, like they're not allowed to talk to you like that. They're not allowed to treat you like that. They're, you, you don't have to care. Like, this is not me advocating for divorce or anything, but I, right, am, right. I, you know, I'm, I'm saying that you have the freedom to, to reevaluate and reassess and, and even have those hard conversations to say, we can, we can still chill, but I need, I need truth spoken into my life, you know? And a lot of times people, they, <laughs> if they're the cement people, they aren't going to receive it. They're going to, they're going to go anyway, but yeah, I could do a whole, bring me back. Cause I could go into that. I like, that's a whole that is, I'm, I'm excited. I'm trying to, you know, like, no, we're not going to go there. We're, we're going to put a pin in that. But um, as you've given some very valuable um, insight into this grit process, and that is, that is the key. I love it. All right. Next part is what does greatness mean to you? Oh man, that, that, that's a really good question. These are all really good questions. I, I love this. Can you tell, like, I literally, I'm like, don't stop asking me these awesome thought provoking questions. Like, let's just be here all night. And Dr. B is like, I need sleep. Um, the, <laughs> to me, greatness is cause I know you sis. Um, I love the term servant leadership. I have recently heard that term from a, a CEO that I'm working with and that resonated strongly with me. What is greatness? What is greatness? Greatness is servant leadership. And um, I go back to, um, to me, the greatest teacher, the greatest uh, person to ever walk this earth, who was uh, to me a heavenly being, he was a servant leader, right? Um, the, The people that have had the most profound impact on me are servant leaders. I think that you know, um, I talked about chef Jose Andreas. He's, he's a man I admire. Um, and he's, he's a beautiful chef. He's, you know, all these wonderful restaurants, but he's also boots on the ground in Puerto Rico. When the hurricane came through, he's boots on the ground in Haiti, um, there in danger, um, because he, he is present and he is authentic. Um, he's an authentic leader, but also a servant leader. And I believe servant leadership, um, that inspires and creates greatness in leaps and bounds, because you can seek out to be great yourself, of course. I mean, ever, there we can count them, you know, multitudes of, of the great people that are around, but when you come at it from a servant leader and you bring others along with you, I mean, magic and majesty and innovation and sparks fly, um, socioeconomic barriers are broken, lives are changed, people are set free. 
um, discoveries and science and in, and love, like there, there's no, no bounds because you're sharing, um, your talents and abilities. So I, to me, greatness is servant is, is, is through a funnel of servant leadership. Um, it's not, it's not what any one place and it's not, it's not one salary. It's not one title. It's not one position. Um, greatness is in many forms, um, and can be found in many places. And it also is lacking in many titles and in many salaries and in many places, in my opinion. I love it. I am going to say something uh, because I was like, I want to say it now before I lose it. And I think it's going to come later, but I want to say it now. <laughs> when you said, I was like, I have to do this. I wrote it down. I was like, I may not come back. But when you said um, servant leader, and then you gave the example of the chef and then bringing, along, bringing people along with you and magic happens. I love that because you, you, we say these words and these phrases, but then you kept talking about the innovation and then economic barriers, barriers can change because if you're, well, cause we said, oh, what's bringing people along? But like, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Because you inspire them to do what they, it's embracing brilliance and that's later, but that's what love it. literally said. Let that's me fun. show you what I'm doing because if I'm leading you, how what a leader does a servant leader does that's supposed to unlock something in you for you to embrace your brilliance and then be able to change your life and then the mm. lives of the others around you so i love Ooh, that i got goosebumps that. <laughs> well you've been giving me goosebumps this whole time so i love that you connected the servant leadership not just to a a title or just a word or a phrase that sounds good but that practical example because i'm all about practical applications especially being a mathematician like show me practical. what this looks like <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of the words. Like one of my favorite words yeah. is empowerment, but don't just say it. Show me. <laughs> Show me what that means. What does yeah. that mean? What do, you know? Like I'm. I I love words. I'm a woman. A woman of words. Yes. But like I need. I need. And that's what you do in in this book, by the way, is you give me the practical application because I can't just. We can, you know, spout profound. You know, <laughs> I'm half Greeks. So we can go back to you know the days of. Socrates and you know all that jazz but I need I need some practical yes I'm a doctor of philosophy but I came from a practitioner space first so it was like okay this is all great I love up here but what does it look like but exactly. yes I don't think I've I've I know what servant leadership is I came up with the embracing brilliance but I did, I wouldn't have connected those together so thank you for for that great example so that was really good cool yay okay. quote me in your next book <laughs> You're putting, oh my gosh, the pressure. I need another one coming out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's I want, it's t already, I, look, this, this baby's not even, well, I haven't nurtured. So I, I got to yeah. at the, at the NICU. <laughs> I know it's maybe, I hope no one gets offended. Sorry. All right. I know. Oh gosh. Okay. So I want to know, like, what are your thoughts on personal development or personal um, growth, especially for a high achieving woman, professional woman? all of the success, but what are your thoughts about personal growth? It is imperative to, um, to work on personal development, personal growth professionally, and, and then per personally, you're, you're asking like for, um, you know, we, when, when we get to different points in our lives, um, pro professionally, we'll just talk on the professional spectrum there, there comes pressure, there comes um, challenges there are, there, there are moral obligations. There are just time constraints. And when, when you're coming at it, uh, it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's draining. Um, and if you're only, and if you're doing things the same way, you've always done them, it, you're not going to, you're, you may be successful, but you're not going to be as successful as you could be. And I did not realize how important for me professionally working on my personal mindset was. I mean, the term mindset, and I am, I'm telling you, I coach on mindset and I hate the term. It right. bothers me. It bothers me. I hate the term life coach. I hate it. I it's, it, it sounds, you know, cause I have, I have what I think of it. I think of it as like somebody that's in Nevada, like that's doing chanting <laughs> with Sage and, you know, you. yeah, you know, but mindset uh, and my mindset work is what has allowed me to succeed working with coaches and discovering um, 
most recently I was working and I believe coaches should have coaches, by the way, I, I'm absolutely, a firm believer. You absolutely. should have good wise counsel and you should have coaches. But when one of my coaches, um, so something that we discovered is that I was dimming my light. Sometimes I was dimming my bright. I was dimming my shine. Cause I'm a lot. Melissa Styers is a lot. That's why you want me as a speaker, but you know, one-on-one, -on -one, maybe I, I always, um, I know that I have a big personality and I know that I'm, um, a lot of times, especially when you go up to Washington, DC, or, or we're in we're deep South, you know, uh, a woman with a big personality and a lot of opinions that like people, you know, rubs them the wrong way. So I was kind of mm, keeping myself in check in certain areas when really I should be out there. I should let, you know, let, I don't want to say let it all hang out. That's not what I'm meaning, but let, you know, let the sparks fly because baby, a firework, like that is what I should have been doing. And the working on myself had to, has allowed me to do that. And, and my leadership has gone through the roof. I've seen, I have seen tangible improvements of letting things go of, of once again, innovating in my, in my professional work because of that personal development um, and that personal growth. And that's just one example. Um, but I believe they, they go hand in hand, just like, you know, exercise, good sleep, good vitamins and, and all that jazz. Um, if you're not, if, if you're not, working on this end then the, the front end you know the back end or the front end they, they've got to be in alignment and so if, if you don't work on the personal stuff you're you're I believe you're going to burn out I believe you're headed for um, a crash that there is mistakes or the worst ca best case scenario is you're just not going to be at the peak at top performance and don't we all as I'm assuming all of your clients and all of your audience like they're they're the best of the best and to mm -hmm. stay the best of the best um, you have to, you have to work on yourself holistically. Yes. You, you hit it right there. And I'm so glad that you added that last part because I know some people were waiting like, yeah, whatever I I'm whatever until you said that part of you're not at your peak. And I know that Clint, for high achievers were like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, I'm glad you said that because it's like, you can still be great and have all of these. I had a whole PhD. Yes. And I was still, <laughs> this is your story. I mean, yeah, you can get, you can be great. You can, you can stay great, but you're not at your peak performance. I, I am so glad that you said that. See, I didn't say it people. Someone no. else said it. And there's multiple peaks in your, in your professional career. There is going to be more than one peak. Mm -hmm. We all know there's more than one Valley, but there's more than one peak. So it's just whether or not you're going to, you're going to keep pursuing it. I am so happy that you, we are talking tonight because we do talk about the valley so much. It's like, oh my gosh, the valley, the valley, the valley. But we don't talk about that greatness peak, <laughs> you know? And it's like, or we think once we hit that gr that great peak, <laughs> we think that's the only one. That's a trap. Comfortable. <laughs> oh yeah, that is a trap. That That is a big trap. And I think sometimes it comes naturally to rest on that peak because we're so freaking tired. We're so tired. We made it. I will never forget. Can I give an anecdote? Do we have time for an anecdote? Yeah. I mean, I will never forget when um, I was in uh, Jordan and we hiked Petra, my delegation, and I no, I was not in shape. I was not ready for a flipping hike in the middle of like one of the biggest things. And, and I remember I, I got to the top and it said end of the world. And I was like, yeah, I freaking feel like it. And all the while there was a, on the other side uh, for $20, I could have taken a donkey. And I was just like, I could have ridden a donkey. I could have taken a donkey instead of wasted five. I mean, you know, I'm glad I did it, but there's all these different, you know, you made it, you're at Petra, you're hiking, but I could have saved myself and energy and like the sweat and the photos are terrible because I'm so tired, you know, but it's just, you know, there are these peaks and there's these opportunities, but um, you, you, you know, there, there's still more, like I was, I was there, I'd arrived, but man, I could have just taken that donkey and saved myself <laughs> and a lot of complaining. <laughs> this wasn't the direction, but I'm going to say this anyway. You gave a perfect example of coaches, the, the importance of coaches, executive coaches. We both do not, I'm strategists, but more someone in your life, like coaches, because I don't like the word life coaching either, but sometimes I'll hashtag it because I'm like, somebody will see it, <laughs> but <laughs> It is what it is. It's a mindset it is what coach, it is. life coach, success coach. Right. It is what it is. But you said that it's like you, we did all of this hard work to do something when there was an, 
I don't want to say an easier way, but there was a, a better path to get the same result. Yes. And then sometimes we look at people like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing and this, that, and the other. But we didn't realize they had the best kept secret of having a team of coaches yes. behind them. And we were out here struggling. And I mean, yeah, we've accomplished things, but just imagine if we found the donkey. Mm -hmm. Exactly. On exactly. The that time we would have saved, that energy we would have had, we would have made it up there for sunset, you know. And then we could be at our true greatness. So yeah, mm -hmm. I love how all of that circled around. Uh, what I was going to say, oh, well, I think we talked about that because we, oh, no, we didn't. What does it mean to be professionally powerful? Oh, goodness. Professionally powerful. You know, wow, that's, that could go any, um, <laughs> anyway. And I think you're, you, you might hate me for this, but I, it, it goes along with leadership. I think professionally powerful is of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is you have a seat at the table, right? So you are in a position to where you can influence. So a place of influence, um, but a position of power is when you are in a position to, to me, to bring one or more people along with you to your journey. And I don't just mean, um, maybe maybe it is in the boardroom. I've heard one of my favorite speakers, um, Jamie Kern Lima, she's the founder of It Cosmetics. And she's, she yeah. said, if you, you know, maybe, maybe you do not have the job to bring, but if I'm, if I get invited to the CEO forum with fortune 100 and I have an extra ticket, let me bring you doc. I'm going to bring you into the room with me. I, I don't have the job for you, but I have this access, right? And that's been a huge term, especially, you know, in the United States access and, and equity. So I, I believe that it's, that it is that when you are able to, to, to bring people with you, to give them access, to, to promote, to inspire, to, it's a fear of influence um, because it's, I have also seen people that have a lot of professional power that they don't have the title. It's nothing to do with the title. It's their reputation, their value, their, they get it done. That's how I start. That's how I started is, I mean, I was never, I was sitting next to, brain surgeons and neuro, um, Nobel laureates. And I was the one that was directing them because I, you know, I was in that position of, of, um, of, of power because of what, you know, of, of the, of the work. So I think it's, I, I don't think it's in the, it's once again, it, to me, it's not in the title. Um, and I think it can be found everywhere and I think it can be applied everywhere. And even, you know, if I may, cause this is just on my heart right now, even in well, I know you're talking about professionally, but even in friend circles or in um, in uh, associations, professional associations, where you know maybe get somebody else on a committee with you, get somebody else to wear it, like un help unlock people. Not everybody; they don't all have curly hair like us and are outgoing, right? There, you know, some people are sitting back, some people are waiting to be invited, and and when you when when you see um, the other thing, I think is when you're able to see talent in others. Um, and pull that out. That's, that's leadership. That's, that's access. That's all of it combined. Um, and that's a rare gift uh, that more that I think all of us have if we hone it, but I don't, I don't see it used as much as I believe it should be. I like that because um, like you said, the ha connecting power to access. And if you take it away from having power or being in, a, you know, like how we think about power, you're right. If we think about it in terms of what you said as, as access and helping someone you know, become, be empowered themselves, that is um, how you use that power. That's how you become professionally and personally powerful. So I like that. I'm going to use the access. That is what being yeah. powerful uh, really is about. I love the example of bringing one along with you. I may not be able to give you everything. I may not be able to give you a job, but I can give you access to this opportunity. So yeah, and I can explain for, yeah, or I can take you aside to somebody that's junior and I can explain to you this decision, or I can, I, I've done that in my jobs and my corporate settings where I've coached, you know, other colleagues and was like, this is what, this is how you should respond to the CEO. And this is, you know, grow them. Like it doesn't, it, you know, once again, sharing that wealth and sharing that insight only makes you better because, you know, just because I made her look good does not make me look any worse. Right. Wow. See, yeah, we're going to have to come back because that is another topic in itself. And I, I do, and I've been that person, I've been a hoarder of um, information or 
giving yes. advice or anything like that for whatever reason. I mean, you know, we're not going to make excuses, but it's, it, it is what it is for whatever reasons. Like I've seen things like, well, I could say something, but I'm not. <laughs> and it's not always from a bad place, but the fact that I didn't speak up in that moment, I just robbed someone an opportunity to be their most powerful selves mm. um, and empower them. So yes, that is now going to be in the front of my brain. Now, this is not just jumping into people's business people and telling them what to do. Or right. No, that's no, not no. what we're talking about. But you know what we're talking about when people come to you and they genuinely either ask questions or you see them going down a path. <laughs> I've seen it. And you, you know, just pull them to the side because we've all, we don't get to this level of in our professional careers where someone didn't pull us by the coattail or the exactly. So people have done that for us and we often forget. Yes. So I'm glad you said that. I love it. All right. So I think you're a successful person. I really, really do. Mm -hmm. um, but what is your definition of success? Oh man. Well, my definition has changed over the years. I was coming up on my 20th, I guess during COVID was my 20th high school reunion and I um, couldn't go because it was COVID, but I found my little memory book and I, I had what I wanted back, you know, with 18, it was really amazing. 18 year old self. Um, I wanted a silver SUV. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to be married. I didn't know if I want kids. Sorry, Ella. I thought I'd be an aunt. Um, so success at 18 was an, was an SUV, which I have surprisingly, um, and <laughs> a life of better. Yeah. It's a silver randomly. Um, I don't too, like, it's very weird. Uh, did I manifest that? I don't know. Um, and this world, this traveling the, the world, which I actually did too. So it's, it was really weird to read this. Um, but that was success for Melissa Tony. That was my maiden name, um, at 18 success now, um, looks, uh, looks like peace. Um, and it looks like in my professional life, it is when I am able to use my talents and abilities. I want to use what I'm gifted in. That's my biggest, um, that's, that's my biggest passion. And one of my biggest pet peeves is wasted potential. I hate when, and this is why I love coaching because I cannot stand when I see entrepreneurs like set in the sidelines, not doing what they're talented and gifted to do. Cause I believe we are each gifted mm -hmm. with our, with this um, amazing, with things that we're only supposed to do. Like, it's just like, we all, we all have our own fingerprints. Like we all have the things that we're great at and we're supposed to do. So um, success for me personally, or professionally is working and using my, as much as my talents and abilities. Not, of course, not everything I do. I love, like, I don't right. like spreadsheets. I will never like spreadsheets, but like, if I'm allowed to speak, if I'm allowed to connect, um, that, that is success. And then, um, peace in my home and just, uh, just, uh, in my, in my family and also in my, in my friend groups. And I'm t I'll tell, be honest, like right now, I don't feel as aligned COVID has done that. Um, success is relationships and, um, new relationships and old, um, being, being able to sustain and weather storms, whether, um, it's family or friends, um, being there for those that are, that, that when they need you and when you need them. So that's probably the two areas where, um, maybe success differs. Like I don't, I, it's not mirrored, um, personal and professional. It's a little different. So I have a question because you, that story sparked something. So at 18, you wrote out what you thought success would be like, and was you accomplished pretty much what you wrote. So as you got into your that mountain, did you write another story? Did you write it out again? So I didn't write it out, but I'm looking. I'm looking behind me. I did create a vision board for the first time in my life, um, <laughs> and I and it was really funny. I joke. I created the vision board right before COVID, and like half the pictures are of travel and of people eating together. <laughs> So um, that was really weird. But the one of the biggest things is a microphone and stages. And that is something that I have that has really blown up for me. So um, I didn't write it out, but I'm looking at it now. I don't think I'm going to get on the Ellen show. Um, I have a picture of myself with Tyler Perry. It's a real one. I didn't cut myself out of a magazine with him, but I want to work together with him one day. Like I met him. He's a lovely man, obviously. Um, so I have some far-fetched things on there. Um, but some of this stuff has manifested in over, I guess, just a little a year. But I, yeah, I didn't think about that. I didn't write it out um, specifically, which is, um, that's interesting. It is, especially for us high achievers. We do have this plan, but then it's like when we reach certain things, like, do we write it? Like, do we keep going? Yeah. 
just wanted to put that out there. Just wanted Ooh, to see. That's interesting. You made me think. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, oh. I need to redo that. I do need to write. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think that's all for all of you watching. Just do that. Write, just write something new. Allow your brain to go because you, we see what happens when we were younger and things turned out. So um, crazy. Try to, yeah, let's try it again, people. So I want to know, <laughs> with all the success that you've had and the things that you've accomplished, is there any part of your life that you think you gave up on or ignored to have um, your career or level of success? Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, um, I, you know, I never tried, I, you know, I never tried out for the first American Idol, which I really wanted to do before it blew up and got really intense. But no, I don't think, luckily, um, I believe I've been spared. I think that um, without work, without, without doing the work in various ways, therapy, coaching, um, reflection, all of that stuff, uh, owning things, um, there's, there's probably a very good chance that my marriage um, would not have succeeded and not saying that succeed, like it's work. It is work. It is work every day and it's work. Um, and I, and I wouldn't have had, um, my daughter, I don't think so, but luckily through grit and grace, um, that that's not the case. I do, you know, there, I, I think if I could go back, I, I, I didn't know if we were going to talk about this at all, but, um, the, the thing that I would have liked to, it, there's a quote, um, it says 20 things that women should stop wearing after the age of 30, one through 20, the weight of other people's expectations and judgments. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. And I, what I would have loved to see is what I would have been like, had I been free back then. Mm. What, what would I have been like if I didn't have anything to prove, you know? Um, I think, I think it would have been a little bit more smooth sailing. Trying to keep my lashes on some, I'm, <laughs> that's, that was that, that hit hard that, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, you know, we say, I, I had this on my computer comparison is the thief of joy. And that is no joke. That's not a colloquialism. That's not just a random proverb. That is truth to me. Um, that was truth to me and it, it can destroy it. And, 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 um, especially now in the age of social media, I thank God that I've gotten at least somewhat of a grip on, on that because I can't imagine carrying around all those expectations wow. and the social media, um, just because, you, you know, someone else said, stop being jealous of other people's highlight reels, you know, like, stop, like stop coveting. You, we don't know. Um, we didn't know what Robin Williams was facing. We didn't know what, um, you know, countless others were going through. We didn't know what, I, I just, I can't, not to totally go on a tangent, but Simone Biles, like, I'm just so impressed and proud and thankful that she did that because the great, the goat, you know, we all, so um, yeah, to, like, I, I think that I could have given, I, I could have found that piece, that success, the piece, P-E-A-C, um, earlier. Um, but luckily my marriage so far has hang on and I've got, I've got a daughter and I'm thankful and I'm thankful for my health that this like ulcer, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that put it on. That's a big one. And as high achieving professional, especially women, men have it too. They just show it differently. But when you get to, oh, there's my pen. Um, <laughs> when you get to a certain level, we've been conditioned a certain way and it's all about expectations and that perfectionism and you have to be this way and everything is expected of you. And then we leave out of school or out of our training still with that. And we don't, we, we didn't, we didn't think it was going to come into adulthood, but apparently it did. Hot, hot and heavy. <laughs> I tell you, it, and it's interesting to look at, you know, I brought with me from childhood, you're only as good as your last, is your next best thing. You're only, you know, you got that applause, you won that, this, like, and I know, you know, like, yeah. you're only as good that that praise that seeking, yeah. you know, oh, that, you know, it's destructive for youth, but it's, it is crippling for adults. I mean, youth can bounce back. Like we, like th that is, that is no way Th that's some chains right there. Oh my goodness. Talk about, talk about the prison of your mind, the battlefield of the mind. 
And it's interesting, like you started off talking about because you were on stages and it was a great part. Like I was also on stages. I was, you know, I had to do dance. I was speaking. I was a cheerleader and all those were great. Mm -hmm. But then it was like the other side to that, that you didn't realize what was happening. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, not to, I, I sound like I'm just quoting all these like pop stars documentaries, <laughs> but Britney Spears and just watching what she went through and just you know, she was the icon of all icons for those, those huh? seasons and just the, the brokenness and the, literally they broke her and they, um, it just, it, yeah, it's, it, it, it is so interesting because I do believe grit is, is found through all of those things. And I feel like that is where you found your grit was on that stage in those competitions, but it's, it, it's also then how do you, you know, take that that grit and like you said, turn it into greatness and brilliance. And I think that comes with emotional intelligence and yeah. once again comes with work, doing the work. And I know I'm tired, I'm exhausted of doing the work, but if I want to succeed, I I've got to keep doing that, right? Wow. Oh, that was really good, Melissa. <laughs> really good. Okay, we did talk about this and I am coming back to it because maybe something else is going to come up, but I am doing the movement, embracing. I'm brilliant. So when you hear that, what comes to your mind uh, when you hear that phrase? Oh man, embracing brilliance is to me, like literally I feel you are doing what you were made to do. And that to me is not just in the professional setting. That's in every, that's in any quarter, like maybe. And I think honestly, that is a trap that sometimes, you know, I, you know, we have our vision board or we have our journal, what we want. I, I don't want to tell, I, I don't like, oh, I hope I don't step on toes, but I do not like when um, we tell the, the quiet, shy person that hates the stage that like does not want to go on it, please don't make me go on it. The real person that would rather, that is more afraid of public speaking than dying, that's their greatest fear. Like, you know what, just work hard of it, hard enough and you're going to get there. Like you're going to get there. You can do, you can do anything like I, I think that is kind of like a load of crap, like with the American dream, like I am five foot tall. I will never be a runway model in Milan. Like it's not going to happen unless they have some special benefit where they're letting five foot tall, little, little fluffy girls, like w women walk the runway. Like I'm not meant to be that. Like I'm not meant to go to NASA now at, you know, this age, like it's not, you know, there's not. So, so I think that we've got to, uh, not rein it in, but maybe, you know, may, I'm into fashion. I love fashion. So maybe that means I take that and I work with a girls group and I help them and I help these, you know, 14, do you need a moment? <laughs> Go ahead. But you know, like this, so you help them, I, but, but I do believe you can plug it into different things. Cause I, I don't like that load of BS that, you know, you're fed, like be anything you want to be. Eh, no, not really. I mean, I'm not, you don't want me to be your heart surgeon. Okay. Like you just, you don't want that to happen. But so, but going back to brilliance is I do believe it in when you are um, embracing that brilliance, you, you are working in your giftings and abilities and your callings. And I know that sounds so hokey and I hate all that language, but I do believe it. I get excited, like speaking, pouring into people's lives, whether it's a stage of thousands or coaching with one person or a best friend, like it all, I'm working in my brilliance. I feel like right now we are in brilliance. Maybe that, I mean, I, if it's prideful, well, that's what I feel. So, you know, that's to me what um, brilliance is. I'm so humble. This is root beer. I'm drinking root beer, by the way. It's just root beer, I promise. So I want to, I'm going to go back to why I was laughing in a minute, but <laughs> For those of you who are watching, Melissa is the same. This is how she is. I met her like when I didn't really know her. We were in a group together. She was this way. We had a chance to meet in person. She was this way. Even at late night, you know, group call, like just sister friends on a Sunday evening. <laughs> she's like this. So, oh, oh working um, events. I've seen her at events. Melissa's like this. So I just want to say this is this is her and I love every <laughs> moment of it. Real and raw. I, lo I love every moment of it. So if people see me like if I'm not reacting, it's like, you know, I'm just trying to, I, this is Melissa. So it's not, yeah. But I was laughing because I remember years ago and now I, my background, I am a teacher, a K-12 teacher. And this is important. Why is a K why I said K-12? I used to be the one who said, no. They're not going to accomplish that in life. 
good. Thank you. Thank you. Don't feed my head full of idiots. Uh, yes. But I I took a lot of heat and I mamas don't want to hear you say that about their kids. They don't. They they're did going not. to NASA. They're rocket oh scientists. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. And I would be the one all the time, even at like our church events. And I was like, I I don't think they're gonna. Becky make can't it. carry a tune. She can work as hard as she wants. Yeah. Becky cannot carry that tune in the bucket. Sorry, in my ear. In my ear. right. And then even uh, as a um, college professor, I would go and say, um, I don't think you're you're cut out for the profession and I will get so much backlash so I just stopped and you this is like coaching therapy this is like coaching slash therapy for me I need to get back on that and that's probably why I'm having anxiety because I was that person <laughs> to be now like, it's part of your brilliance it it's was and it's hard people and don't I'm, like you, we're all in our egos but that's true and I was like I'll I, I am willing to find where they fit like I was yes I said, I'm willing to do that, but this isn't it because one is taking up too much of my time <laughs> trying to get them to do this. And two, they, they're just not going to be this. Well, and yeah, yeah, it was bad. And, and I know, and I'm like you, it's like, I need to work on my tact as well, but there was no one come after me, but there, I'm not even going to just say the thing. I'm just going to, because I don't feel like it, but there, <laughs> was, there was a student, a certain type of student. And they were like, oh, they want to go to dental school and be a dentist. And I was like, this isn't against what this particular student had, but I was like, not going to happen. <laughs> not going to happen. They're like, oh, you're just being so rude. And the, if they worked hard and I was like, but they can't hold the instruments. Right. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, mm -hmm. no, you know, well, I tell you, <laughs> no, you're right. Something that freed me was once again, personal, personal development and, and personal growth is 2012 when I learned about strength finders and working to your strengths. So take, take Becky who can't carry a tune, but boy, she loves to twirl that baton and let her twirl, let her twirl, let her twirl. Okay. Take Timmy who is terrified of being on stage, but he loves the spreadsheets throw him in there, take Melissa, who cannot deal with the data and put her on to, you know, I think that that's kind of been this myth to also debu to debunk, because you remember, I remember years ago, third grade, I couldn't, cursive handwriting, and I worked hard, worked hard, could not get that A. Now we text type, doesn't matter, right? But it's, it, you know, does, and I, it's not, I'm not saying don't work hard and don't try to work on your weaknesses, right. but man, let's, let's polish up those strengths, right? And that goes all the way back to your brilliance. That's another way to say it is, is your brilliance is, is working in your strengths. It's letting your strengths sparkle. It's not hiding them because sometimes, you know, going the, the adverse is when you shine, you know, and you, you are brilliant, like that comes with the light. I've got the ring lights right here. Like sometimes people are like, mm -hmm, you know, they're, they're, they're the rock people, right? They don't, they don't want that. So um, there's, there's a light that comes with that, whether metaphorically or sometimes, um, you know, actually, <laughs> if you're a speaker. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but I just got freed. <laughs> I, I just got freed for a moment because, you know, it's like, stop, you know, we are taught sometimes like, oh, focus on your, you know, those weaknesses, you got to get those weaknesses up and we, and then our strengths go into atrophy. Because yes, yes. Oh my gosh, that is such a perfect analogy. You've worked the leg in the cast so long, the rest of you is a blob. Yep, all the muscles are dead. Yes, yes. Preach. Oh gosh. Oh I feel like we need, I feel like this is a new, I feel like we need a two day event on this. <laughs> deliverance, um, podcast. Like this is, this is, it's, it's true though. It's true. It's true. Oh gosh. Okay, you all. I promise we're, we're wrapping up, but you all just have no idea. I don't plan these conversations. Like they kind of know the, the direction, but I let them go. <laughs> yeah, no, she didn't plan this. <laughs> She'd be drinking something different than root beer probably. If she oh, oh goodness. And I'm keeping all of this here. I'm keeping this all. Okay. <laughs> um, I think you may have answered this, but what advice would you give to your younger self? Well, I have, I have another, I have another quote. Okay. Okay. Um, and well, I have two quotes actually, but one is people, this is another thing. I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. If anybody wants to find me, but I need to people, do better over there, but go ahead. Yeah. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, people with purpose, goals, and vision have no time for drama. They invest their energy in creativity, 
and focus on living a positive life. And I got goosebumps reading that because when you are pursuing your purpose, when whatever that is, and you know, it's hard to know what our purpose is. I think we're all still finding, I think purpose is, that's one of those mystical terms or whatever you can, you can analyze and translate to many things. But when you are, I would like to say working in your brilliance, like you said, um, you don't have time for for the drama. You don't have time for those, those 20 people's opinions of you. You don't have time to be weighed down by the rock people. I feel like we have all these great analogies now. Like when you, when that, and that's what I would tell um, my younger self, I would say, focus on you do you boo. I would, I would really say it. I would say you do you. And I would also tell her, do not iron your hair, embrace the curls. If I would have embraced these curls, I love my curly hair. I mean, I ironed it. And, and this is, and what an analogy though. Like my mom, like the clothes iron, you know, like it would uh -huh. be wet and fighting it out. And that's just such a great, like, don't try to iron out your curls. Don't try to conform when you were made to bounce and be bubbly, when you were made to speak truth and light, when you were made to be that rocket scientist or that entrepreneur or that mom or that dad or that, you know, team that that foster parent like don't you know don't conform to what you feel society is telling you what the what the scrolls what the apps back in the day what you know what what the page or what the people who have been paging you your number you had your code you know like don't like that's that's what I would say is honestly I think the biggest trap for me growing you know and my entire growth and still is just other people's opinions and it's and also it's easier said than done Melissa just don't care what anybody thinks. Well, I'm a people pleaser and I love people. So I want them like, you know, that's a, that's a hard thing to dissect. Don't care what people thinks, but love people. How do you do that? You know, like it's, it's, it, you know, but that would be my biggest set of advice and the curly hair piece. I do love that. Don't iron out your curls. And now it's like, everyone's embrace your curls, embrace your natural. And it was like, where was this? <laughs> nowhere. But. It was nowhere. And no one told me how to take care of curls either. So that was on my mom. It was no good, no good. Um, Oh my goodness, I lost my thought. What was I going to say? Oh my goodness. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but it was a good one. Oh, I know what I was going to say because people tell us the advice, but they don't, it goes back to those practical tools and practical strategies. So it's like, well, um, don't, don't listen to everyone, but it's like, well, how do you do that? And what do you mean? Or what do I need to listen but to? Yes. What does it look like? Mm -hmm. What does it look like? What does it look like? What is the behavior? Well, the behavior for me, I'll be quite honest, wouldn't have been getting into credit card debt to keep up with the Joneses in DC. So I was carrying the right handbags right. or the right shoes. Mm -hmm. There's a practical, you know, I yeah. completely agree with you. Like these, I love, I love, I'm all about the positive. I'm all about the catchphrases, but like you said, like what, and then apply, tell me how to apply it, please. How to apply it. Right. And we do that a lot professionally. They, it's a prescription, like we know it's like, well, if you want this, then this is what you do. This is how you get there. But personally, it's like, go figure it out. I got, yep. I got to have these phrases for you, but. <laughs> <laughs> and women, we're the best. We're, we are, uh, sorry, I'm leaning over. We're like, you know, mom life, best life. You know, <laughs> what the heck does that mean? Mom life, best life. I'm exhausted. I got circles under my eyes. I'm so tired. I was up at 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. last night. Mom life, best life. Lip be your, be, you know, you be you, shine, never let anybody dull your sparkle. That's one of my favorites. But what does that mean? That meant ironing my hair. Okay. I got to apply it, but you know what I'm saying? It's we, we do this to ourselves, women, we do it to ourselves. And that's why I love once again, she's not paying me to say this, but that's why I love this embracing grit for greatness. Break it down. Give me the tools. Cause it's, a, it's a cute saying. Okay. But like you said, what the heck does grit mean? Like, what does it mean? Grits? We eat grits in the South, you know? So like, I could be here all night, folks. I really could. I would, I would love it. Like, so I know, thank you for allowing me to be my authentic self. There's no other way for me to be, unfortunately, or fortunately. <laughs> no, I love every moment of it. Okay. <laughs> I promise you all, we, we, we're, we're coming. none of this and we played none of it. <laughs> we did not. Okay. We're walking in our brilliance. Oh goodness. Okay. What would you tell your, your older self? So it's like 20 years from now. Uh, well, not what you tell, tell yourself. How do you see yourself 20 years from now? Oh my goodness. You know, I, hmm. 
you know, 20 years from now, I can only hope that, that I am, that I am loving God and loving others. Um, that, that I am, that I am a servant leader of, of some sort, um, that I am, that I am making people's lives better, um, on a grand scale or a small scale, because I do believe that when you change one person, um, you, you change the world. And that was my other quote that I, that I would tell my younger self and that I will cling to my older years is from my dearest favorite, Dr. Maya Angelou, you know, people, they'll forget what you said, how you said it, you know, what you said, the way, but they will not forget how you made them feel. And I want people that are with me to feel loved and to know that they are on this earth for a purpose. And if I can help them pull that out of them, all the better. So I just, I, I pray that I'm still at peace and in health and just loving on others. And I know that's, that's cheesy, but it's true. It's me. <laughs> I'll make my sign loving on others. Melissa. <laughs> If it came from anyone else, I would say that was cheesy. But if you all have been with us the entire time, you know, like, no, she really means that. I do. I mean it. Legit. Yeah, she knows, Dr. B knows. It's intense. She's like, she knows. She allows my hugs. It is what it is. Yeah. And I, because I'm not a hugger. Mm -mm. So that's why she said that. But I, I do, I do love that. Sometimes we, we think we try to find the right answers. Uh, to fit something, but if it's in you and that's who you are, that is what's going to come out. So I do love, love that 20 years from now, you still want to be Melissa. Yeah. And I don't, I definitely don't want to conform any, any more. I want to be less conformed, which is scary. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we talk about like, it, now you have me thinking about the catchphrases, be unique. There's no one else like you, only one fingerprint, but then it's like, be this way, conform, <laughs> do this. Exactly. You're, <laughs> this is not what corporate America looks like. Melissa, corporate America does not sing on the bus to Carlos Slim. Well, maybe it does. Maybe <laughs> it does. No, I know. And I think, you know, breaking down these yeah, I guess you can just tell, like, I love, I'm the person that loves these catchphrases and hates these catchphrases. Like, I'm tired, like, I, I don't like, I think I don't, I love words, but I do not like words that lack action. Mm -hmm. Well, then I sound like you need to write a book. That's what I heard. I mean, I, did you all hear that? Put that in the comments. Melissa, where's your book? <laughs> Make her write. Look, she told me to write one in 2022. Mm. She's going to write one in 2022. <laughs> Okay, now we have to get um, serious. Now we have to get serious. So <laughs> I feel like there should be some organ music playing. Like I know. I hear, I hear the altar call coming. Like I'm just like, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. I'm ready. <laughs> so, with all of this, you, she started off at the beginning talking, talking about her wonderful credentials and everything. So, now we're going to end up with that. <laughs> now you all are judge are really questioning this. No, they're no, but they got to look. That's, I will. As someone, um, you know, I watch all of these. I do have my own coaches and then I also seek out other people. I just like to learn from other people, but now it's like, stop learning, take action. So I'm looking at things with a different lens. So one of the ladies in this challenge was like, if you don't, uh, why would you want to have a client, whether they're in your smallest package or your VIP, where you don't want to hang out with them or, you know, she said, have a drink with them, but whatever mm -hmm. your, your cup of tea is, um, or your root beer, you know, you want to be with those kind of people. And you and I both have been in something where it was like, I don't, I don't really care for this person, <laughs> you know, um, and not saying that, that you have to like everyone. I mean, all of my students didn't like me as a professor. I didn't like all of, well, I not, don't believe it, but, <laughs> but that was a forced situation. But if we're going to be in this coaching relationship or this, co um, even consulting, yes, you want to like the person, especially if you're going to spend some time with them. So yes. I'm glad um, people got to see your personality. So if they ever do reach out to you, they already know there are no surprises. They, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, look, just only looking at pictures or maybe a video of somebody on a polished stage. This was great because now people really get to see and know you. So with all of that being said, what do you, like you talked about your coaching and your um, services and things like that. Talk more about that for us, please. So really right now, um, the, the two, and I, I, you know, going back to the brilliance and working in brilliance and the two areas of need that I'm really focusing on right now are what are our one-on-one -on -one clients. So I'm taking one-on-one -on -one clients. I still, um, I'm, I'm still, I, I have some slots open. 
um, to work in, in various areas. And I don't, you know, we'd like to say like, what kind of coach are you? Well, when you, when you've done the training, you actually can coach in most anything like that's, that's the beauty of coaching. Um, so I like to work with, um, with, with individuals right now that are, that are motivated, but needing clarity. So that's my passion. My passion is people, but the other area that I feel strongly about, and I felt strongly since COVID hit is working with leaders either executive coaching one-on-one -on -one bringing me in because you've got a vice president that's just not stepping up to you know the plate there's a gap that's missing or coming in to do trainings for teams executive teams hr teams um there's just been i i um i just saw so much mistrust and i saw fear when COVID hit from the leadership of organizations and corporations across the board and that is another area that um that's that i really want to um continue to work and serve in because i believe that when you can break that down and um give the give leaders the tools they obviously they change the entire organization um so it's very easy to find me on styersconsulting.com i'll make sure dr v has that um, and you can, you can go to Styers Consulting, you can go to book and just get on my calendar or just send me an email and you can send it directly to me. Um, and my, my assistant or I, um, she's going to, she'll make sure to flag it for me. So just get a hold of me. I'd love to connect. I'd love to hear. Um, I always love feedback. Um, and so I, I'd love to connect with any of the audience members. Um, I'm just, I love it's, it's cheesy, but it's true. I love, I have a degree in public relations because that little 18 year old, thought that she liked people and that was a really great career field for her and wow. that part has not changed so I, this isn't part of it i do want just in case someone is still on the fence um, whenever they watch this you mentioned like if you wanted to work with the vice president but what would you say if someone said well you were never a vice president of a company how would you coach them Oh, that's a great question. Well, I would say that I was in the room and shoulder to shoulder and have coached and I have directed uh, generals, four-star generals, literally the richest man in the world, emirs, sultans, uh, multiple ambassadors, um, all of that stuff. I don't believe that you need to have the exact uh, degree uh, or title matching for matching to help people. And something that I've noticed, especially in the higher education field is that folks will get their PhDs and be very focused on their research subject matter. You may have met this or um, in the medical field, they'll be very focused on their surgeon and they know how to deal with bones. But outside of that, maybe you know wider, these people do not have bedside manners. Um, they do not understand uh, how to respond. They do not understand social cues. They don't, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, I'm just, uh, I'm highly trained and I'm highly versed in all these different cultural cultural norms and different settings. And so I would say that there is, first of all, I've, I've worked in the corporate field with, you know, so many different types of people for over 20 years. But when you're working with a coach and a consultant, you don't need the title to title. And sometimes that's actually a detriment. Um, but if you don't like it, you don't have, you know, it's okay. If you need that vice president, I don't, I don't think, um, Good luck, but <laughs> yeah, I wanted to put that out there just in case because I I've come across that sometimes um, when I've wanted to and that and I'm just put, this is all about being honest and transparent is I am called to to leadership and work with leadership and I mean I do have a degree in leadership but not that type of leadership because it's different but I I used to early on uh, what stopped me a little bit from doing well a lot for doing this journey or going full steam ahead is well, you were never this, how can you help with that? But then the experience I've had, I do, do you know who I've been in the room with? So I'm glad you said that part because that bit, one that helps me with some confidence. Yes. But then, uh, when you, you want that experience from someone else on the outside, it's like, I may not have been in that role, but I had the opportunity to see a lot more than just that one particular well, role. And also, you know, when you think about a coach and the easiest analogy is going to football and going to what, you know, going to basketball or whatever, but these coaches, you know, I watched once again, I watched uh, the Michael Jordan with Netflix, like his coaches weren't, weren't pro basketball players. Maybe they played in college. Maybe you, you had a, like, we'll take the title vice president, the different, but they are trained and they know how to get you to move the ball down the court. The tools and the resources that you provide as a coach and a consultant are the tools that these executive leaders need to get them down the court. 
No, you were not Michael Jordan. No, I was not Scottie Pippen, but I can get you to get the ball how they did it because I have created the playbook. We're Phil Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I was, I was, uh, who was, what was the, what was the shorty? Um, Muggsy. Muggsy. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think that, you know, these ur- urban, I, I'm a Gator. Did Urban Meyer play football? I don't know. He don't, he definitely didn't, he wasn't pro. Like he wasn't, he, you know, he didn't have the Heisman, um, but yet we pay him bajillions to coach and lead our team. So I think for anybody that says, well, you weren't this, I would just say, well, you know, was Vanessa Williams dad was, you know, like right. their coach, you know, their trainers. No, they're, but they're crafted and skilled and you're, you know, you have honed and you have watched and evaluated. And I think that a lot of times what I have seen in the leadership field, it's people, leaders are shot up to leadership positions, whether it's through a promotion, because that's the next step they have to, whether it's through net, they get there. And then it's kind of like deer in headlights. And there's, mm-hmm. a, there's nothing worse than a leader that is not prepared to lead. Um, they may be the most brilliant scientist and they know how to do it and they can build it. But now they're in charge of a thousand people and they cannot communicate their, their wants and wishes. And that's, um, that's once again, wasted potential. And it's one of my biggest pet peeves. So that's what I would say to them. So just send those people to me and I will explain, I will explain why. And it's funny. I do that. Like I'm a woman, I get to change my mind. Part of my dissertation was, I was like people who are, who are leaders in the school need to know the subject matter. And, you know, I wrote a whole dissertation, but through this process in my own evolution, I was like, no, I just need you to know just enough language to get the people who actually teach this. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that, that, you know what, that's the other thing I would tell myself back 20 years ago is not, nothing is black and white. Nothing is black yeah. and white. There is gray. And cause I was talk about high strung uptight, right? Rock, like, oh my goodness, there was black, there was white, then two shun. I mean, yes. and the rigid, the rigidity, the rigidness yes. and the holy cow. And like, I think that's part, possibly a part of youth, no offense, but I mean, you could not tell me Okay. any which way it sounds like you know so there is that part too of there there is a lot of gray area yeah and, uh, I was scared yeah. to change my mind for a while and I was like do I get to do that and through coaching and support it's like you get to because you evolve so yes exactly no I know oh, <laughs> well this has been um great do you have any last words of advice or encouragement or anything you want to share well, I'm just so happy to be a part of this. This has fed my spirit. Um, and I just, I just encourage, you know, all of your listeners to stay in touch with Dr. V and follow. She's just, as a wealth of wisdom. And I think, you know, on the second talk that we do talking about this people that feed into your life, we talk about this, you know, um, these, there, there are coaches and there are folks that, that we follow and that, that are, um, that they don't know I exist. Jamie, you know, I mean, was I in her Jamie Liam Kerner's book launch party? Yes, I was, but she doesn't know me from Adam, but she, I, I value her wisdom, right? So continue to stay with people. If you like what you saw today, stick with it. Follow, follow us, follow Dr. V, um, but surround yourself with people that are going to grow you, that are going to motivate you, going to encourage you, and that are going to stand with you in the hard places. Um, and I think build your teams that way and look for careers that will allow you look for places that will allow that maybe that's you need to be you're going to build your own or maybe you're going to you're going to make a move to an organization or a team that's going to um, provide you with those with those people around you wow i appreciate you um so much this has been this is probably the most entertaining interview in this series i kid you not i think this is the most entertaining (laughs) I mean, they've all have been great, but I, we've laughed the most on this one. Um, so I appreciate you taking your time out of your, your busy day and sharing your knowledge and just being yourself and being a great practical example of all the things we talked about. And those of you that are listening and watching, like when this comes out, look, you might want to get in on the ground floor with um, the Melissa Styers because she just touched on just the surface of her wealth of knowledge and you might want to tap into someone who's been into some royal places. And <laughs> I'm just saying like, you know, sometimes we think about, oh my gosh, how can I get there? And then I have the opportunity of someone who's done it. And even though she says she's not coaching on that, but you just never know what could come out of you connecting with her. So look, get in while, you know, we're all still in this, 
in this space because once we go up there, you're gonna be talking to our assistants and the people on our team. So I'm just just saying. All right, so <laughs> just saying, get in now. <laughs> But thank you so much. Um, thank you all for listening and watching. And remember to be well, to be empowered, to be bold, and to be brilliant. So until next time, bye.